Here's the field of daffodils with a few crocuses thrown in. You can see the beautiful purple crocuses. And I'll show you another area where I threw seeds, crocus seeds, and they came up. These originally were planted by my grandparents. They were planted by my grandparents as a uh, income, as a cut flower income for the spring months. This was before the trade with the Netherlands. You can see more crocuses. Before the trade with the Netherlands took away this income because this was a during the hungry time in market gardening when it was just cabbages and potatoes and leeks. My grandparents would sell the cut flowers. So all these daffodils, there's about 21 different varieties of daffodils in this field. And they're only just coming out at the moment. Now here, these crocuses that you can see scattered here are me hand scattering. I hand collected the seeds of these crocuses from other areas on the farm and I threw them out into the field and I said there you go let's see if it'll work and it's worked beautifully you can see loads and what I love is it's different kinds of purples there's that kind of white purple then there's this deep deep purple and then there's very very white ones and then up here they're more pale ones. So these are all hybridized crocuses. Here is beautiful. These ones are, are really beautiful. Look, I love the purple at the bottom going up to the white and the stripes. Really, really beautiful. And then these ones are almost completely white. So these are all the daffodils. I mean, here's another of my hand cast crocus seeds. Now, I hand cast those five years ago. So it's taken five years for the crocuses to be, every year they've been getting better and better. The problem is the pheasants like eating crocus seeds. So if there's a lot of pheasants about, I don't get many seeds to spread. So these are some of the early daffodils. You can see there's this white one, or this creamy one with creamy petals. Then here's a very, very traditional kind of yellow one. Then here's a really, really big trumpeted one with a huge trumpet. So that's three, and there's more varieties that we have around here. Oh, here's, look at this, crocuses. These are like brightly buttery uh, orange. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Those are gorgeous crocuses right there. So these are some more, let's see if there's any other kinds of varieties of daffodils. These are lovely ones here I, the, with the creamy, the yellow trumpets and the creamy petals. And there's some more and see it just goes this whole field they go on and on and on down the field are all our daffodils. And you can kind of see the rows of them slightly down towards the bottom. But I always try and spread a few out so that they're not all clumped together. So it's kind of like in spring here, it's like the sun has gone splat on the hillside up here another couple of weeks and everything will be out. Here you can see the bluebells are going to be coming out. Loads of bluebells are right here. There's celandine. This is celandine here coming out, blooming. So yeah, it's spring is occurring here. And this is a lime tree we're underneath. So that is the field of daffodils and there'll be more and more and more of them as the um, over the month over the month of March and my grandparents planted daffodils that flowered 
enough varieties that flowered over the season so that there were loads and loads and loads of different bunches of flowers they could pick and sell in shops and at country markets and things like that. So you can see they're all different stages of flowering. So loads of daffodils. And different sizes and stem lengths. And see those are gonna be coming out and those are out. And it's just, uh, yeah, I'm very lucky that uh, we don't put sheep or any livestock in this field from the end of December till after the, the greens have died back of the daffodils. So that's our daffodil field.